Morning. The sun's shining. Lovely day. A uh, bit of a slower start this morning after the fire yesterday. Um, yeah, we still haven't got any staff on deck, which is fine. We're just trying to, we're between the Christmas and New Year's, so I'm trying to keep them away and give them a break if we can. So there's not much going on. Um, we're actually um, heading out for lunch today. Um, so I've had a phone call from uh, Rod, the guy that uh, designed the concos for the header, and he's got a guy that wants to um, try that's still harvesting down the Western Districts of Victoria. Harvest a local harvesting contractor, or well, he's local to me anyway, um, and yeah, he's wanting to to try. He's having a few issues with road loss and wants to try um, these back concaves. He's already got five or six sets of the front ones. Um, so yeah, so just going to get to the head is all blown down and washed as, you, as you've seen if you've been watching. Um, so I'm just going to get to now and pull pull the concaves out. Just here. Uh, do have Miranda coming from Elders, um, agronomist, she's going to come over and have a look at um, where we're up to with this rice, so I'm hoping if I ask her nicely, um, we can video what uh, what we're actually looking at and just get her to give us a bit of a run through on, she'll be able to do it better than me, so fingers crossed, um, yeah, she might be good enough to do it, but anyway, we'll see how we go, hopefully, if she doesn't, I'll try and, uh, yeah, try and remember it all and, and run you through it, so anyway, we'll get these concaves out. So we've got Miranda here from Elders in Denny and she's kindly going to explain to us what the actual go is here because I don't really know. <laughs> so today I'm just going to assessing the crop for panicle initiation or PI in short, how it's referred to. Um, I explain it to farmers or cereal croppers as it's essentially first node. Yep. Um, that's just how I explain it just to so guys can sort of comprehend what it is because it can be a bit confusing just using different terms. Just have a Stanley knife here if that's... Yeah, that might actually be a bit better. I've bought that from doing yeah, this too many times. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, just this. that side, yeah, I reckon. Don't worry, it took me a bit to get it to come open too. This is a bit technical. 
So basically what I've just done there is grab the main stem, yep. um, like any cereal plant, you've got your main stem and then you've got your tillers. So I've just pulled the tillers away. Um, what I'll do here is I'll just cut off the root system, just to make it a little bit easier. So I'll go to the close to the base as I can, like that. So I've just got a nice clean, clean stem like that. And then this is a bit of the finicky part. You just got to cut the end yeah, of finger. <laughs> cut it nice in half to sort of get a picture inside that stem there. So I'll just have a look. Oh, we could be on. So I don't need to go too high for this, just about like that, because yep. I know we're not going to be too far up. Now we've got this airspace here. It could be a very poor indicator of PI because yep. guys will look at that and be like, yeah, is that PI because there's a gap? You can't use the airspace. Yeah, so okay. basically, it's very tricky. But you just slightly, this knife's actually really good. I don't know how well the camera's going to show it, but anyway. You just chip away here. You can see that sort of white line at the top of the airspace. Yep. Um, what they call it is there's a fluffy tip that'll develop when you're at PI. And at the minute, not quite yet. It's starting to form. Yep. But it'll just be in there. You'll see a little fluffy tip. Yeah, you can tip. see it with the naked eye, but yeah. the camera won't show it anyway. So, um, I reckon, based on that calculator, John, you're going to be hitting PI Sunday, Monday. Monday, yeah, yeah cool. All right. Um, but yeah, basically, this is just the start of the reproductive phase in the rice crop, yep. and so sort of your last opportunity from PI, you've got two weeks, 14 days, to do your urea. Yep. After that period, you're wasting your time. It's, it's too late. Right. You've got to okay. do it in those 14 days. Right. Um, and basically, yeah, we just use that as the indicator, start of the reproductive phase, and yeah, pretty much from now on, it's gonna go crazy. Yeah, cool. It's good. So awesome. Awesome, thank you. Thanks, John. That was easy. <laughs> Morning, oh, it's actually afternoon now. Uh, so, yeah, Miranda came, we looked at the rice. Um, actually, I think I mentioned on the last one, last video, I had a plane booked for uh, today uh, to, yeah, top dress, top dress the rice and corn, but, um, we've put him back a week just with um, the rice not quite being at PI, uh, but uh, I had a good yarn to Miranda after um, I stopped filming and we got talking about um, drones and that sort of stuff and there's actually, she's been working with a guy uh, that's got um, spray drones and, um, and I, how the, the conversation sort of started. I'm looking for a new drone for this job, um, just to give you guys a bit of a bird's eye view and um, my other little drone, um, one of the girls had a bit of a crash with it and if you've been watching it along you'll notice the footage is a bit bit sketchy, it's not great um, and yeah it's got a problem in the camera so um, I actually bought that drone second hand off eBay so it's had, had a pretty good lifespan so but my thought was with the drones um, whether I buy something a bit better and we can actually do a bit of um, paddock mapping and that sort of stuff so anyway we got on Miranda's been working with this guy um, commercial drone guy um, doing spraying in rice so anyway uh, I posed the question to her about um, the NDVI mapping and that sort of stuff which is it's and I can show you here on my phone it's basically a satellite imagery imagery of the um, and take me get this out of the vegetative matter basically it gives you an index so so hopefully you can see that it's it's a bit hard to tell on the I've just got this on my phone obviously um, and it basically gives a, a colored a colored map and and the map the colors are obviously linked to a legend of um, how like the the red the redder is the higher the um, the veggie index um, but the trouble with satellites is if there's a cloudy day, um, you don't get that map. So rice growers used to use <coughs> that map and where that map, how that map sort of correlates with what we're doing on the ground. They used to use that map to essentially help with um, where to take um, your sample cuts, which we'll do next week, um, to basically determine how much you're to put on, on the crop. Um, but obviously with cloud cover, the um, satellites can't um, you know get a get a good enough picture so as technologies um, got better go away flies um, you can now get these cameras on the drones so um, she put me on to Alex from Altitude Ag and yeah he came over um, this morning um, so which will be the um, what you'll see in a minute and yeah he ran a 
just ran a drone um, and it was all it was pretty cool actually what he did so something a bit cool this morning we've got uh, Alex here from Altitude Ag Drones and we're going to interview a we'll have a yarn with him a bit um, next time he comes what we're actually doing is he's got a, mo a multi-spectral camera on a drone and we're just mapping the rice with it um, and when we top dress it next week we're going to come back and um, run the drone over it again and then we'll see whether we can get any um, any change in, in I suppose vegetable matter um, and just see, see try and map it a little bit but he's got a fair set up here well, he's got spray drones as well um, but yeah he's this year he's this is the first time he's run this drone so I sort of said to him I said do you mind if I have a yarn about it and he said oh how about we do it next time he's got a bit more experience with it but um, I'll just show you what he's doing here shouldn't really catch it. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got the RTK base here, so it's running on um, good old Elon gear, he's giving us a hand with the internet. Uh, and then what he's done in it is he's just gone in yeah, you probably can't see that, but basically he's plotted a plotted a course using Google Maps, and it's just runs in auto. Um, so he's got a couple of spray drones here. So he's uh, been doing rice and uh, corn, and he's heading heading up north to do a, a cotton job. So um, yeah, pretty cool sort of well, very cool sort of tech. Um, and yeah, it's probably a big big future in it. But he's a bit camera shy just yet, but we'll get him <laughs> next time. Uh, so what he's done, uh, it took about 45 minutes to do that. We had to stop a couple of times with the, it kept raining, so and the rain upsets the camera. Uh, but yeah, he just plotted a course on on Google Maps on the uh, controller of the drone and just press auto and it, it did it all itself. So it probably flew a line every 20 metres roughly, um, and I think he said it was 80 metres in the air, so it was a fair way off the ground. Um, and we could just watch it on the screen and it was was taking sort of five or six uh, pictures every uh, every oh, every second I think or every couple of seconds so there's a bit going on um, but I'm gonna get him to give us as I mentioned um, it was the, he's only just got that drone um, so he sort of said oh Herbert we, we he'll he'll give us a bit of a spiel next time which will be good uh, but hopefully Hopefully between now and then um, we can. I'll get a. He's going to email me what he's actually the map of what we've got, and I can show you what it, what it is, what or what what we've done. So essentially, what the plan is, we've taken one now. We'll top dress next week, um, and then we'll take another. Get him to come back in three weeks' time, and we'll do another flyover, and hopefully we can we can sort of look at the vegetative index and just see. See whether there's been any increase with putting the urea out, um, essentially. So, but what I'm also looking at doing with him, um, and to buy that drone with the RTK setup and all the rest of it was, were, and the software, um, you're up around that eleven or twelve thousand, he said, um, which is a bit more than what <laughs> what I was intending on spending. So, uh, we might just be better off with a. Um, I sort of give him a bit of a rundown on what um, he's actually a DJI reseller, so all the gear he had was DJI stuff. So those two big drones in the back of his ute, they're they are spray drones. So um, I reckon in future he would have been if we had known he existed. You know, back in the last well this year, back in May or June when we had all that rain and we couldn't get onto the canola to spray it because it was too wet. And then we've had all got all now got this weed issue. We could have got him in, um, and yeah, those those big drones hold about 40 liters of, of water, um, and he's essentially got one in the air while he's reloading the next one. Um, and then yeah, the big generator there charging batteries, and yeah, he's fair outlay of money just just talking to him. So anyway, so we'll get him to come back in three weeks and, and run another one, but. Um, there's going to be a big fit for this stuff just talking to him and talking to the agronomists about it um, with 
basically flying in the winter cropping stuff we could once the crops emerge you know the wheat crop that's five four or five or six leaf um, we could fly the fly the paddock with the drone essentially get basically do a vary rate map for our spreader um, and then rather than just doing blanket rates of urea we just um, wear the where the biomass isn't quite as much we can up the rate and where it's um, where it's a bit heavier we can back it off so um, and what we can also do is overlap um, the yield maps over the top of that as well so it's it's a pretty cool pretty cool space um, and yeah it's something I haven't really dabbled in much but um, this to get him to it's cheaper for him to come and do it and he obviously he's got the software and he can he he knows what's going on as far as you know the algorithms and that sort of stuff rather than me buying it and then um yeah it's not it's 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 getting getting our value for money um just isn't there so we'll probably will look at a higher like a higher end drone though just um one for the so we've got distance um but also on something just for checking livestock like lambing ewes and that sort of stuff um where we've got the paddock here split into four um, with the irrigator in it. If we could essentially, you know, park here at the sheds and I could fly those four paddocks um, and only have to go in there if uh, if there was a you in trouble, essentially. So we just can't do that with the little drone we've got now. The, it just hasn't got the, um, the, the travel distance or the, you know, 15, 10, 12 minutes and the battery's flat. So we can't actually, whereas the fly time on these better drones is three quarters an hour. Um, so, and you know, a couple of, couple of, we could travel a couple of kilometers with it. So uh, yeah, so look, it's it's a pretty cool space um, and the, the technology is there. So we might as, might, might as well try and take advantage of it. Um, and yeah, we'll just, we'll just see how it goes. So not much going on, uh, as I said, in, earlier on um, the guys are still time off um, so yeah I'm actually yeah haven't done anything else really I've just come outside since um, Alex has been just to come out and get a bit of fresh air I've just been mucking around with some budgets and that sort of thing on the laptop but uh, yesterday afternoon I was we were supposed to get out for lunch um, Sarah did but one of the one of the kids was crook so I stayed home um, and actually got called to a fire um, believe it or not another one too in two in two days which is a bit frustrating but anyway it was a bit of a fa false alarm they had it out by the time we got there so um, but no just uh, yeah trying to keep the feet up at the, at the moment um, yeah not doing a hell of a lot but yeah it's good it is actually not that it's forecast it is sort of spitting rain here again and there's been storms go around to the north and yeah it's crazy weather anyway uh, yeah so no bit of cool stuff pretty interesting um, and yeah, next week we'll we'll get to have a look at this PI and what we do with the or panicle initiations, the proper term for it, and what they do with the uh, drawing it down. We'll um yeah we'll be drawing stuff in the microwave and that sort of stuff, which will be a bit of fun if we don't um, burn the microwave. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, we'll uh, keep watching. It's um yeah it's I'm learning a bit too these last few days, which is which is good too. So anyway, thanks again, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Ta da.